Hey, Ever, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Am yeah. I the only one here? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's just you and me today. Normally, uh, Ralph, um, and I think another uh, student, I think Kelly, would also Kelly. be here, usually at this time. <laughs> um, 10 o'clock. Yeah. Um, also, you know, because I've already, you know, I've, I've been covering this since last week. Maybe they, they feel comfortable with it. I don't know. I mean, that's fine. Um, I'm not that smart. No way. <laughs> Even if I have to end up taking it again, at least I'll be I'll, I'll know something up to this point because that's not that's not acceptable. Yeah, yeah. So well, like I said, you know, with with what happened, um, you know, with this COVID thing and and uh, the fact that they switched everything to online, hundred one hundred percent online, you know, you know, some students may have may have kids at home and and some people may not have access to the internet. Right. And it's just that the, 
logistics of even getting Chromebooks and laptops to students. Some students may not even know they could get one. Who knows? It's just, it's a little crazy. But, you know, I, I have a feeling, I, I hope I'm wrong, that um, we may go through something like this again, maybe the fall, maybe the spring semester. Again, I don't know. I hope not. But uh, what, what they did for the summer is they took all of, all of the face-to-face -face courses for this summer and mm -hmm. they converted them to online. Really? And, yeah. And the problem with that is there are already students who had enrolled in some of these face-to-face -face courses. And mm -hmm. so then they're now told, oh, no, it's going to be online. And these, that's not what they signed up for. Right. And I went and looked at the, at, at the uh, online schedule right now, and they they essentially have 100% online courses now, and they have also online courses that are are quoted as being I think they call them live virtual lecture or something like that. And I just don't think students are going to go for it, but you know we'll see what happens. Well, the virtual online lectures I think are more are pretty effective with the Zoom that you're doing because it allows you to be somewhat in contact with the instructor on a periodic basis. Um, but uh, I found it to be very difficult just to absorb the material because it, I'm taking another, I'm taking two other classes and I have a computer uh, literacy class and it just takes longer to comprehend and absorb them because you have to basically teach yourself. Yeah. Are, are, are your other classes, are they using Zoom or no. something? No. I have one that requires um, a discussion board where we have to participate in the discussion and respond to four other students in mm -hmm. uh, um, what is it a culture culture across communi communication across cultures class, but the uh, computer literacy class and ironically we're working on Excel, so a lot right. of the things that you're talking about right now I'm learning to plug in an Excel program. Uh -huh. um, that's a lot more difficult. You know, I'm pretty good with computers, so it's taking me a while, but it just takes time yeah. to absorb and be able to, to do it. And, and your, your situation is probably the hardest as far as me being able to, uh, to, to get it online, but it's, it'll come around. It's just a matter of me, you know, sticking with it. Yeah. And, you know, I just, I'm, like at this point, I'm just trying to give you guys demonstrations like, you know, share the screen and, and just kind of do some repetition. Like, like today, you notice I've got, I've got problem 12.2a pulled up, which is a really, really good problem. If, if we had like this on campus today, we would probably take the whole class just working this one problem. It's really good, but, but yeah, it's just like, I was wondering if, if, if who, what other instructors were or were not using Zoom. Um, it's I know a good I have, format. Yeah, there was, uh, I had a, I have a real estate agent and I had to take 12 hours of continuing ed. The face-to-face -face classes were, were scheduled up until Three weeks ago, the, the last one when was was posed, was canceled, and everything has gone to Zoom for real real yep. estate agents. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, if, if you're that company Zoom, I think you're pretty happy right now, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm glad that it came through because I have to re have so many hours of continuing ed to renew my license, and right, that's right. the only way to do it. Well. If uh, we have to do this again, like if this happens again in the fall, right now I'm using this Zoom version. It's the basic version, so it's the free version um, because I'm this is I'm still kind of trying some of the stuff out. But there are certain features of this uh, Zoom that I cannot get unless I actually pay for it, and uh -huh. and I didn't realize all because now that I'm into this, there's there's some things that I could do with managing the people who come into the class. I can I can set up a different view on how you actually view the screen. There's some pretty cool stuff, but I wasn't quite sure if, if, if Zoom was gonna be something I was gonna use long-term. And, you know, I'm kind of liking it, but, you know, since our class essentially ends, I think it's next week, we've got this week, and then next week is chapter 13. And then the, the week after that is the final exam. Um, I just decided that I'm just gonna keep it the basic plan for now. And then do, because there's still some stuff I can do. It's pretty neat with this, with Zoom. And then if we have to go to it again in the fall, I'll probably get the advance. I'll probably go ahead and pay and get the, there's a get pro a bigger version of it. I can only see one corner. I said, um, the other Zoom um, conferences allow you to see the entire screen. Yeah, that's because I got, that's because I'm using, I got the basic plan. <laughs> well, it's better than nothing. Yeah, well, you know, at, at first I thought, you know, I could, I didn't want to just go out and buy something that I wasn't sure if it was going to be any good or not. 
And so this is still, this is like our third week doing it. This is still kind of, I'm, I'm testing it out. And I, I almost bought it. I, the, the, it's like, it's not, it's not really expensive. It's like 15 bucks per month. But since this has kind of been working, I'm just going to keep this basic thing going until uh, we're done. And then possibly in the fall, if we start up again, um, I'll definitely get the pro plan because if there's, I would at that point, um, cause there's some stuff where I could put you into groups and I could have you group up with, you know, do some, try to do some interactive stuff, even, and I know it's online, just some fun stuff. But the other thing about this class is it's only a 50 minute class. And so we got to be real efficient, you know, and getting to the material. It's not like we have an hour and 15 minutes to do it. We only have 50 minutes. Um, and so that's the other thing, but uh, I think we got another person. I think it's what Kelly's on. So we've got Kelly and Everett. Kelly, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, cool. Well, we were just, I was just waiting to see if anybody else logged in. It might just be you two today. That's fine. Um, so what I want to do is walk you guys through, this is problem 12.2a, just to kind of recap, again, the concept of adjusting entries. Um, I've literally covered everything that I think they cover, except there's only one more thing I want to show you in this problem that relates to interest. But everything else that I've showed you this week and last week, um, should cover all the, t all the stuff that you'll be tested on or quizzed on. Um, and just to remind you, the quiz uh, is available in Blackboard. So don't forget to go ahead and get that done, you know, get it done by Sunday. I, I just checked it. I don't think anybody's taken the quiz yet, but that's fine. I'll probably send out another email announcement in Blackboard. But don't forget about that. And then just kind of a heads up next week, we're only doing two days on the financial statements. And most about next week is going to be we won't be doing any journal entries anymore. It's just looking and doing some analysis of the income statement and the balance sheet and doing what they call financial ratios and just analyzing, um, like for example, the liquidity of the company and the return and how you, how you use financial statements a little bit next week. And then that'll wrap it up for the semester. And then uh, the test will be the following. I'll probably spend a little bit of time next week even, you know, talking about the syllabus and I'm sorry, I'm talking about the study guide and, uh, and then a little bit about the exam and what, the, what to expect uh, for final exam week. Because we're basically, I think this is week, technically this is week 15, and then next week would be week 16. And then after that, that would be your normal exam. So we're still kind of on that, that, that track. So, um, so today, let me walk you through this problem. And then after I go through this, let me know if there's anything else um, that I'm missing, if there's anything else that you would like for me to discuss or try to demonstrate in our time today, I think this problem covers a lot of it, but if there's something that I'm missing and, and you'd like to, me to go back over, let, just let me know um, and I'll be glad to do it. All right, so 12.2 way. And remember with adjusting entries, always watch out for the dates and they tell you right into this problem. Let me, let me get my stylus here on they tell you right in the problem the starting point is july 1st so july 1st is when they started their business all right and so they're going to give us all these select transactions here at the bottom and of course they want you to not only do the adjusting entries but they want you to record the initial entry so this is kind of like how i've been i was doing it in class even back in chapter five when we got to how did you get prepaid rent or how did you establish the account to begin with this this problem starts off if you look at the dates it's they uh they have everything on on july 1st just about all these problems are on july 1st and then our problem will be to go back and look at each of these and to determine what would be the adjusting entry on july 31st and I think what I'll probably do in this, since I go through this, I'll just do it one at a time, just to kind of keep it. I'm not going to do all of them together. I'll just go one at a time. So I will do the first entry. This one's going to be a prepaid rent. And then we'll look at the adjusting entry. And then we'll just kind of check them off that way. It looks like we got one, two, three, four, five, six. You got seven of these to look at. And I think after I do this, this does kind of recap just about everything that I would expect you would want to know for the exam or the quizzes. All right. Okay. So on number one let's check this out it says that we signed a lease for an office issued a check for check 101 for fourteen thousand four hundred dollars 
and that's the rent in advance for six months. So that's the key here is this is gonna be prepaid rent. I'm just gonna write this off to the side here. You'll have prepaid rent and of course you'll have cash and that's gonna be for 14,400. Now I'm writing this off just in my note, just off to the side here. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna show you the actual journal page and the actual typed up entry in a minute. But just to kind of start us off, this would be July 1st. And then the question will be July 31st, we have to do an adjustment. And of course that's gonna be on the prepaid rent. And of course we would take what, 14,400 and you simply divide that by six and that would convert the problem, that would convert your rent into, uh, into a monthly rent expense. And that would of course be the amount for your adjustment. So having said that, I'm gonna go back now and I'm gonna look at the entry with you and then we'll kind of go back and forth and let me know if something's not making any sense. I'll, I'll be glad to go back over it. And let me change that. So this, what I'm showing you right here, this is again, your solution, which you have this in Blackboard. Notice they debited prepaid rent. There's the 14.4. And then of course, here's your credit to cash. Again, the same amount. So that would be your initial entry. So at that point, then let's go and check out the adjusting entry. And the adjusting entry is right there. Notice they're debiting rent expense and the amount turned out to be 2,400. So if you go back and divide that 14,000, I think it was at 14,400, divide that by six, that would be the, that's, your, that's basically $2,400 per month is your rent. So this is your adjusting entry, they're debiting rent expense uh, for 2,400, and then notice they credit prepaid rent and then of course there's the credit. Again, th that's a review problem. But I like this because it's showing you um, not only the adjusting entry, but it's actually showing you this is what started at the beginning of the month. This is what created that prepaid rent. Okay, so again, that what, again, this is 12.2a. Let me change this, let's toggle back and forth. So again, that was our first one. And then now let's go back and let's check out the second one, this is gonna be on some interest. All right, so now I'm on the second entry right here. And it says, we borrowed money from Second National Bank by issuing a four month 6% note for 33,600. We received 32,928 because the bank deducted the interest in advance. So this one is a little bit new. I didn't talk about this entry last time, but I thought it'd be a good one to go over today. And what's happening here is, is we're actually paying the interest on this loan in advance. The bank went ahead and took out the interest. So the way this would look, and I'll, again, I'll go back and forth to the solution, is, is we're receiving $32,928 in cash. That would be our debit. Now the difference between these two is $672 we would put that into an account. We're just gonna call that prepaid interest. Okay, and then our credit, of course, would go to notes payable for the full 33,600. So, and again, just kind of take a note of this and then I'll go back and forth and I'll show you, I'll go over the solution. The way they calculated that 672, they still took the principal times rate times time idea that I've been talking about. So what they did was, is they would have taken the 33,600 multiplied by the interest rate, which is 6%. And I always just say do 6% over 12 to convert it to monthly interest rate. And if you do that, then you multiply that by four because they said in the problem, this is gonna be a four month loan. And if you do that, you would get right at $672. That's over four months. And the way this problem did it is, is they just said the bank took the money up front. And so our entry would look something like this, where we only, re in other words, we received all the cash. They took out the interest that we would have to pay anyway uh, up front. And of course, we still have to have that liability shown as 33,600. It's, it's just a format. Sometimes, you know, every bank has a different, different type of loan, different type of uh, um, commodity they're trying to sell to a client. And in this case, they just happen to say we wanted our interest first. 
So if this is happening on July 1st, on July 31st, we would have to do an adjustment for that prepaid interest. And you would have, of course, interest expense. That would be a debit. And then you'd credit your prepaid interest. It would, the idea works just like prepaid rent. You just have to do it for interest. And in this case, since we know, we know that $672 is the total amount of prepaid interest, that's for four months, you could just take that 672 and divide that by four, and that would give you your monthly interest. And that would be what your adjusting entry would look like. So let me go now to the, uh, the first part of it, just to, just to show it to you. So again, I'm looking at this entry right here. Notice they debited cash. And that's for the 32,928. Here's your prepaid interest for the 672. And of course, look, they went ahead and, and credited notes payable for the full amount. All right. Now, at that point, let's look at the adjusting entry. And here it is. Notice we've got interest, interest expense. 168, that's essentially, that's the 672. If you take 672 and divide by four, you get 168. And then they credited the prepaid interest for the same amount, okay? So that's, the same. it's a prepaid, but I don't think I showed you the prepaid in terms of an interest, but I have showed you how to do the calculation. I think that's a good problem to go back and just make sure you know how to get that interest calculation because you know, on the test, I'll have you do so, I'll have you do at least a couple problems on interest. You know that's going to be coming. Okay, so let's go back now and let's look at the third one. So that was the first two is taken care of. Does that make sense, Kelly? Yeah. Or yeah. Is, is, yeah. yeah. You guys following? And again, this is everything I'm doing right now is being recorded. So if you want to go back and play it, you know, I'll have it up on Blackboard later today as well. All right. So now let's take a look at the third one. So it says they signed an agreement with Carter Corp to provide accounting and tax services for one year at 6,800 per month. And we received the entire fee in advance. So literally we would have debited cash, 81,600 and credited some sort of unearned, I'm just gonna write unearned revenue and we'll go to the exact account name they use in a minute. That's not that important, but it's gonna be an unearned revenue, which the book, or I think I'll just kind of say, this is often referred to as a deferred revenue item. And this account right here is actually classified as a liability because quote, we have now an obligation to provide accounting and tax services. Once they pay us in advance, we owe them something. And so the, a liability isn't just about owing money, it's about the idea of an obligation and this would be an obligation. So if this happened on July 1st, we got the money, then at July 31st for matching for the matching principle and, and the gap rules, we have to show how much of this unearned revenue is earned after one month. And of course they went ahead and told us it's 6,800. So we would then have to make an adjusting entry, adjusting this unearned revenue account by $6,800. And when you do that, I'm gonna go back now and we'll take a look at the journal entry. They used, looks like they used unearned accounting fees. Okay, that's fine. And oh, I'm just, Sorry, let me go back to the original entry. I, I was on the wrong screen, just apologize about that. Hold on, let me clear the drawing here. All right, so they used, they debited cash. There's the 81.6 and they use unearned accounting fees. Again, I prefer the word unearned revenue just to emphasize the concept of it, it is revenue in advance, but it's no big deal, it's just a preference. And so that's the initial entry. And then I just had this up a second ago and you can see, go back to the actual adjusting entry. You can see what they're doing is they're debiting the unearned accounting fees for the 6,800. And then uh, I guess when they, they're using this, they call it accounting fees. 
that's the revenue account. I'd rather they just say accounting revenue, but that's a revenue account that gets credited for the 6,800. So they gave you the amount. I think the one we did earlier last, you know, last week, or I think on Monday with the, the unearned revenues, there's a couple more earlier exercises you can, you can go back and look at the recordings that I worked out with you. Um, and I think I've also illustrated this in the modules. If you go back and review the textbook illustrations, I've got some of them illustrated just like this. Um, make sure you look at a couple of those for unearned revenue as well. All right, so that's the third one. All right, so let's look at the fourth one. This is a really good one. And let's check this one out. This has a couple things going with it. So this is number four. And let's see if you can figure this out. It says they purchased office equipment for 20,400 from Office Outfitters. They issued a two month, 9% note in payment. And oh, my stylist just did that, I'll start again. So here's our cost. And they issued a two month, 9% note in payment. The equipment is estimated to have a useful life of four years and a $2,160 salvage value. The equipment will be depreciated using the straight line method. So this problem right here, we actually are going to have two adjusting entries. We're gonna have one entry for the depreciation and one entry for the interest on the note. So the way you would start this is on July 1st, you would debit, let's say, it looks like it's, we'll just say office equipment. And that would be for the 20,400. And then we would credit most likely notes payable for the 20,400. Notice we have not paid cash for this. We're essentially taking out a short-term loan to buy this equipment. So on July 31st, we're gonna have two entries. So let's start with the interest first and then we'll do the depreciation and then we'll look at the entries. So again, the interest would be principal times rate times time. The principal of the loan is 20,400 times the interest rate, which is 0.09, it's 9% over 12. And of course, this will be multiplied by one month. Okay, so 20,400 times 0 0.09 over 12 times one, I think it's like 153, let me check my math again. 20,400, yeah, $153. So 153, that would be our interest accrual that we're gonna to have to book as an adjusting entry. So make a note of that amount and then in a minute we'll go and look at the adjusting entry. Now for the depreciation, we've got the cost of the equipment which is the 20,004 minus the salvage value which is 2,160. And then the question is, is what do we divide by? Well, in this case, it looks like the equipment is four years. So we know four years is 48 months. So if we divide by 48 months, that'll, that would give us our monthly depreciation. So just kind of make note, those are the calculations. And then let's go and check out the actual entry. So take a note, let me get to the actual entry. All right, so check it out. I guess in this case it is 12.28. I guess they're putting this into office equipment. Yeah, here we go. Office equipment. There's the 20,004. And then there's the note payable for 24. So there's the start. So we, we bought the equipment. And then let's check out the two adjusting entries. that. All right, so here's the first one. Interest expense, debit 153. And you notice they credited interest payable for 153 as well. So if you kind of go back and review the type of entry this is, because most of the ones we've looked at are what they call the prepaid adjustments. 
this is actually what they would refer to as an accrued expense because we've incurred it, but it's not paid yet. That's what an accrued expense is, okay? So an interest expense, interest payable. So that's that one. And then of course, the second one is the depreciation that's right here. You debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. So they came up with $380 for that amount that I just showed you earlier, okay? So for this one problem, we had one, we had two adjusting entries that were related to this one transaction, okay? Now, I'll just kind of make a side note here. You know, if this was, if you were in industry or business and you were dealing with ledgers and financial statements, most likely is um, this entry right here, the depreciation entry, a lot of companies, once they get their long-term assets, their equipment purchased, they would usually plug all that information into some sort of computer software. And if, if, if they're using like the straight line method, all this stuff mostly would be automated most of the time. Very rarely would anybody be doing this as a manual adjusting entry. Most of the time, this would be what they call a recurring entry, okay? But with the interest expense and the interest payable, there's a good chance you might act actually do a manual entry on that one, depending on your company. Um, this one may or may not be what they call an automated entry, but I'm just showing you, you should still understand how to calculate um, the interest, okay? All right, so that takes care of that one. And that was the fourth one. So now let's go back and this is gonna be, we're on the fifth entry, which it looks like this is going to be the one, in, the one year insurance policy. So this should be an easy one. Issued a check for 1716 to pay the entire premium. So this would be what prepaid insurance for 1716. And of course, you'd credit cash. Check is the same as cash, 1716. That's what would happen on July 1st. And then, of course, on July 31st, that's one month later, you have to figure out what's your monthly insurance. So in that case, you'd just take 1716 and you would divide by 12 because they said this is a one-year policy. That's 12 months. And then that would be your adjusting entry. So to take a look at it, and again, here's gonna be their initial entry. It's right here. They debited prepaid insurance. There it is for the 1716. Of course, they credit cash. And then let's check out the actual insurance adjustment. It looks like it's $143. So they debited an insurance expense for 143 and they credited prepaid insurance for 143. So that would be, again, another prepaid type of an adjustment. Okay, so that one again, review, you did that back in chapter five as well. Hopefully you've seen enough of those that those are, those are pretty much money in the bank once you see those, those will be easy for you. All right, we've got two more on this problem to look at. So we've got the last one here, which it looks like it says, this is this one, it says they purchased office furniture for 23.2, issued a check for 13.4, and agreed to pay the balance in 60 days, okay? It says the equipment has an estimated useful life of six years and a $1,600 salvage value. Now, in this problem, it's only gonna be one adjusting entry. There's gonna be no interest. And the reason I say that is, for example, if we bought this office furniture for $23,200 and it says we paid $13,400 up front, when it says agreed to pay the balance of 60 days, guys, that's just going to be accounts payable. The difference is going to be accounts payable. You're not going to have notes payable. If you had a note payable, then they would have to tell you what the interest rate is and the length of the loan. But in this case, there's no interest because there's, there's never any interest on AP, only on notes. Okay. So to do the depreciation calculation, of course, just like we did before, 23,200 is your cost. Subtract out the salvage value of 1,600. I think I gave you a heads up. Every, every problem in this chapter on depreciation gives you some sort of salvage value. Back in chapter five, I think all the problems had zero. 
I don't know why they did that. It just makes no sense to me. You guys know how to subtract and divide. I don't know why they did it that way, but they did it. All right, and so this is a six year life. And of course you could just divide by 72 months to convert it to, to, to a monthly depreciation. Don't let the fact that this says July 3rd and not July 1st throw you up. Just because it's two days, we're still gonna count this as a month, okay? You know, we're just looking at time periods of months. You know, if you really, really wanted to, and most likely in industry, you could allocate your depreciation per day, and that would be a little bit more accurate. But just for in terms of just learning, we're just saying divide it by month. So the fact that they said July 3rd and not July 1st, we're, we're still going to act as if that is July 1st. So when we go and look at the, at the, uh, the two entries here, let me get to starting entry. Notice what they did. So they, they debited office furniture for the 23.2. They credited cash for the 13.4. And then you see this right here, they put it in accounts payable, not notes payable. The difference was 9,800. That makes your debits equal your credits. If this had been a note payable, then we would actually have an interest adjusting entry to do as well. But if it's just saying they're going to pay the balance off, it's essentially an interest-free loan because it's like a it's it's like kind of like your credit card. As long as you pay your credit card balance, you owe no interest. So in this case, they just put it into accounts payable. So then when we look at the adjusting entry, which is just going to be one of them, it's just going to be the depreciation. And notice you debit depreciation expense. It turned out to be right at $300. And then credit accumulated depreciation. Again, there's the 300. Okay. So that would take care of that one. All right. Now, one more to go on this. And this will be the last one on this particular problem. And this will be an easy one. It says on July 5th, they purchased some office supplies for 1970, issued the check, and then they just go ahead and tell you, it says assume $880 of supplies are on hand on July 31st. So again, July 1st, they bought some supplies. So we would just debit supplies for 1970, credit cash, and then July 31st, the question is, is how much supplies did we use? And you simply take the 1970 and subtract out, looks like it says 880 are on hand, that means 880 are left. So the difference is what you used. So let's check out the entries. Again, this should be easy for you. Notice they debited, oops. They debited supplies for the purchase of the supplies for 1970, they issued the check, so credit cash. So we got that one. And then on the actual adjusting entry, when you took the difference between what they had, what they purchased and what was left, it looks like they used 1,090. So they debited supplies expense for 1,090 and they credited supplies for 1,090, okay? So to wrap this part up, the thing I like about this problem, and it's a, good, it's a good problem to go back and just think about the concept of what, you know, a company has to record daily transactions, and then some of these transactions generate adjusting entries. This problem is good because you have to do, they have you not only do the adjusting entry, but they have you do the starting point where they say what happened at the beginning of the month, which of course July 1st, so all these entries right here are, I just call these, these are the original entries. They had to do that. And then they would jump over to the adjusting entry side. And then of course you had to figure out which ones were the adjustments, all right? Now, I believe in the past when I worked this problem, the one that a lot of people forget about is that one where you had two entries which I thought was kind of a neat, I do like that problem a lot. That would have been the, the fourth one. 
where they bought the equipment, this one right here, and then not only did they buy it, they had a note payable. So this one, remember that created two types of adjusting entries. And, you know, if, if we were in class in a face-to-face -face setting, this would probably a type, be a type of problem where I'd say to watch out for that because it, it would make for a really, really good test problem where you get a problem where they say record the entries and then just prepare the appropriate adjusting entries. They don't tell you what adjusting entries, they expect you know them. So that would be a good problem to kind of be aware of even for this test because you know, you'll, you'll take this exam just like you did the last one in Connect and connect, I'm able to pick problems like this. I could pick a problem almost identical to this type of problem. And when you go in to take it and connect, you'd work it just pretty much just like this, you'd, but they would give you like the drop down arrows where you select the accounts to debit and credit, but they may or may not tell you to do interest or depreciation. They just may leave it wide open and say, prepare the appropriate adjusting entry. So that, that's kind of more of a higher level, difficult type of a question because they're not just giving it to you. They, they're expecting you to think about what type of it adjusting entries are happening um, in this particular transaction, okay? All right, so that's what I wanted to show you, uh, at least right at this point. Um, Everett, Kelly, do you guys have any questions? I just got you two in the class with me today. Was there anything that I've talked about in this chapter that you would like me to go back over? Anything that you came across that you're not you want some help with? We got about 13 minutes left, this based on my clock. But at this point, I've covered them all. And because I don't have the feature where I say get into groups, and we're, it's, just, it's just the three of us today. Did you have anything else, anything you want me to go back and, and talk about? Uh, maybe if you kind of go over it, um, question, I mean, the problem number four in terms of the steps that you take first and second and third to solve that problem. Problem. Um, uh, Problem four on, on this one right here. Yeah, the one with the purchase office equipment for 24, 20,000, okay. where you have two, two different entries. So let me go back over that. What do you what what do you do first, second, and third to uh, solve the problem? Okay. What things would you? Well, the first thing. Okay, so this. Make sure I got you right. So this would be the fourth the fourth transaction, right? Right. All right. So on July first, they bought the equipment. So that's a transaction. So if we had been in chapter, I guess, chapter three or chapter four, back when we were learning how to do debits and credits and then recording them in the journals, at this point, we would simply, you would debit your office equipment for 20,400 and then we would credit notes payable for 20,400. So we haven't paid any money towards this yet. We essentially borrowed money to, to, to buy the equipment. Mm -hmm. We would have gone to the bank or called up our lender, our creditor and say, look, could you give us an advance? We need, we need some equipment. We'll pay, we'll pay this thing back in two months. And they'd say, no problem. So when we did this, so we actually have the equipment, but now we owe money. So, so let me walk you. So here's what would happen. So on July 31st, we actually have two adjusting entries to make. One entry on the interest, the interest that's gonna be generated based on that note, and the other entry on the depreciation. That's why they tell you the, con they tell you the useful life is four years, which is 2160, and the equipment is being depreciated using the straight line method. Mm -hmm. So we would have, if you wanna do the interest calculation, you've got the, what, the PRT, so you would have, in this case, you would have the 20,400 multiplied by 0 0.09 over 12. And then of course, times one, that would give us $153. Right. So that's the interest. And, and by the way, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. You could, you could do the depreciation first, or you could do this one. It doesn't matter. This as long as you do, just make sure you would get them in. And then the depreciation would be the cost, which is the 20,400 minus the salvage value of 2160. And then I just divided that by, I guess it's 40, 48 months, right? Yeah. 48 months. Now, let me show you something. So since you asked, so if we go, 
just check out the entry here. So this would be, bum, 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 bum. this is the second one, right? No, this one is this. Oh, this is the, oh, okay, so, all right, so, so look at the entry. So they debited office equipment for 24 and they credited the notes payable for the 20,400. We got that. So now let's look at the adjusting entries because there's one more thing I want to show you. I didn't show you this earlier. So if you look at this, where are we at here? We've got, all right, so we've got these two right here. So we're looking at, I'm going to circle these just to kind of know which ones we're looking at. We're looking at these. I moved my mouse. Hold on just a second. Second. 18 through 22. Yeah. So we are looking at these two entries right here. Okay. So this one is recurring. So your depreciation was 380. That would be booked every single month. Every single month, you would have that entry recorded. Okay. This interest, I want to show you this interest. So this, this is July 31st, right? Let me show you this. So the next month, I said this was a, I believe this was a two month loan, right? It was a two month note. On August 31st, here's what would happen. You would have interest expense, again, the same amount for 153. And then you'd have interest payable for 153. But then you would also pay off the loan. And the loan in this case, we'd owed, I believe it was what, 20,400. Let me go back. I think that's what was the amount. They borrowed, yeah, 20,400. So here's what would happen when we paid off that loan. And this is something, it's just for FYI. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna test you on this, but I think it might be interested if you see how this thing follows through. So we would have to pay off the note. So we would pay off the notes payable of 20,400 and we would have to pay off the interest as well. At that point in time, we would have to pay the interest on the loan. And in this case, let me, let me do the math real quick. We would have, looks like it's 306. So we would have to pay off that interest of 306. And that would give us 20,706 as our credit of cash. And the reason I just wanted to show you this, again, this would happen on August 31st. If you're asking, where did I get that 306? That's just 153 times two. You have two months of interest, right? So 153 plus 153, we would have two interest amounts we owe, totaling $306. We got to pay back the principal. And of course, that would be our cash payment. So essentially, that equipment is costing us not $20,400 but really $20,706 if you think about it. And that's not something I tend to get into to talk about too much in class because there's stuff in accounting that would actually say when you do your depreciation calculation, you would also technically have to include this interest as part of that depreciation allocation. But that, that's the, that I would save that for like an intermediate accounting, a graduate level type of class to get into those discussions. But just for now, we're keeping it simple. But theoretically, our true cost of that equipment is not 20,400. It's really going to be 20,706. Does that, does that make any sense? Because we borrow yeah. money. That interest is cost. That's, that's, that's a cost of the business. We used to do something back in the day. They, they, they would say that you have to account for the capitalized interest. And the interest in this case would be that $306. Technically, technically this 306 is really part of the cost of the equipment. And there's other accounting treatments in terms of how you have to deal with that. Um, but again, loans are, are money. But so I just wanted to show you, since you brought this problem up, I wanted to show you how, how would this problem end? You know, one more month would be the second month of the loan. We'd have one more month of interest. And then of course, we'd also have to, then to pay back the principal of the amount, which is the 20,004. 
plus all that interest. And then of course the cash payment would be 20,706. Okay. Okay. That helps cover it a little bit? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> as much as possible. Cool. Kelly, anything else? We got about four or three, four minutes. Anything I'm leaving out from chapter 12 that you, aren't, you guys aren't seeing yet? Um, I think I'm pretty good. Have you guys, I mean, you know that uh, these illustrations, have you been using the Blackboard learning module, the chapter 12 module? I have everything recorded in there for you guys. Let me go back yeah, and show I you something. Watch those. Uh, do the MP4s come up okay on your, on your uh, computers? Yeah. Let me show you something here. I'm going to get to that. Can you guys see that now? The black, our Blackboard page? Yes. All right. So if you go, I'm just going to show you something. Learning modules. Mm -hmm. And if I go down to chapter 12, You'll notice, of course, you've got the audio. Notice everything says .mp4. Yeah. But also notice that I've got textbook illustrations, okay, that I recorded for you. And I even did, don't worry about the handout thing. I think I've already done that. But notice I've given you a, a handout solution on adjusting entries right here. I recorded that one. That was a new one that, I, that was, wasn't in there at the start of the semester. So I did that. Um, I think during our spring break, you know, our extended spring break, I posted that as well. But I think if you go back and review these textbook illustrations mm -hmm. and this video, um, I think you'll be in pretty good shape. Um, plus, uh, you know, this recording today is also going to be posted in Blackboard. And just since I got both of you, you here, you know, if I go back up, this post, this, this video, this meeting today, will be right here where it says Zoom meeting recordings. I'll kind of highlight that over here, Zoom meeting recordings. So once I get this thing done, what happens is Zoom converts it for me automatically, it's pretty cool, into an MP4. And then I go ahead and link it into my YouTube channel and I, I link it all up for you. But this recording today will, uh, will be available uh, probably sometime by this afternoon once I get that up. And of course, you just have to click on uh, Zoom meeting recordings. If I click that, and today, I guess today is the 29th. Notice I've got the other three that we've done so far. And once the, once today's meeting's over in a couple minutes, I'll get everything get set up and then there'll be another one. It'll just say Zoom meeting April 28th. And you can go back and play this as many times as you want as well. So I hope that's assuring because we're almost at the end. Um, All right, thanks, Mr. Drigo. Yeah, the, the one thing that I, uh, you know, we, we, we do what we can, right? But the one kind of the thing I like about this is the fact that the, the illustration that I just showed you today is I would have done that in class anyway with you. But the, the beauty of this is it's now recorded and you can go back and play it again if you need to. And at this point, I haven't, I, we don't have the resources available. The college hasn't, hasn't supported our classrooms where we can actually record lectures. I'm sure there's some classes that do it, but at this point, um, it'd be nice to actually have our face-to-face -face courses recorded as well. And that's something that, that I'm gonna be looking into going into the fall semester if we have face courses, is to try to see if we can't get something in the classrooms, technology or whatever, where that we can actually record the, the meetings in, in our class sessions as well. But I do like this setup because at least you can kind of see my, my writings, hopefully, and you can kind of follow my thought pattern in terms of the approach and how to work some of these. I hope that helps. Yeah, it is. Thanks. All right, All right guys. So we're right at 1050. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, we'll do this again on Monday. Uh, next week will be chapter 13. Make sure you get your chapter 12 quiz and Blackboard done by Sunday. Uh, don't forget about your projects. If you get stuck on your project and you have any questions, just email me. Um, I typically check my emails all the way up till midnight till I go to bed. So as I'm always checking emails. Um, all right. Just let me know. All right, guys. Thank you. All right. Good have day. a good one.